Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings and I am at the Northern Michigan Garden and we had a couple days off so um, we came up here and Rod is doing what he loves and that's planting so he is definitely somebody that likes to take his work home with him and does a great job with it. So it just started to rain so I'm hoping to get a couple videos in before it gets too rainy just to show you the progress of what he's done this year. This is a zone 5 garden up here so the things that are in this garden are reflected to zone five. Up here by the house, the perennials all came through the winter very well. Uh, things we have in here are Veronica, some heuchera, Hacanella grass, some ferns, and then a hosta. Things that we poked in just so we have consistent color throughout the summer are the polka dot plant in the rose, red, and white. We did some sun patient purple, sun patient's white, and then let's see, oh, we planted a new perennial, that dark perennial there by the, the walkway. That is the dark side of the moon, a stilby. So I'm excited to see how that does. So this area, I think it's really nice. And I love the foliage in this area. All those bright chartreuses and such look really pretty. In the crescent planter that I did a video on earlier of rod planting, we've got this cool little black wispy, I don't even know what it is. It's a tropical house plant we found. Um, so we did that as the thriller and then we did the monarch's banquet escalapius because there's a lot of butterflies up here and we've got the really pretty geraniums with that rose and white we did some creeping jenny to to hang over the pot and that ma uh, matches nicely with that hackling of claw grass and then we've got the bossa nova white begonias so this area i think is just a really nice bright splash of color so it's really welcoming as we drive up the driveway. This area here as well has a lot of color going on. Um, we'll start way back in that far corner. Rod planted a ton of caladiums along the back of that house, of the house, and that red really pops nicely up against that blue. In the very back corner, there's a rhododendron, and that has really taken a beating since uh, two, two winters ago, the deer ate it, and then it got trampled down so we just really trimmed it back hard and um, so it's just starting to regrow so i'm excited to watch as that regrows let's see we have an enemy in that very far corner we planted a new jacob's ladder this is a new one for 2023 with that beautiful variegated foliage we haven't seen it bloom yet because we just got them in so that will be fun to watch we've got some shasta daisies along with some heuchera that are right behind the deck and then we've got these salvia that are blooming. And that looks really pretty. Behind it is the bobo hydrangea. And they're in flower or bud right now. That's because they were grown in the greenhouse. So typically that's gonna be like a July, August bloomer, but we're just gonna leave them in flower because that's how they are right now. So they'll be flowering early this year. Uh, he tucked in some of the surefire red begonias. This area gets morning sun and just a touch of afternoon sun. And then around, around the hanging basket pole, he tucked in a ton of the Ulstermeria. So I'm excited to watch those, not only at my home garden, but also here at the Northern Michigan garden. Those are gonna be annuals. They're mostly zone eight hardy. So I know they're not gonna overwinter, but I'm excited to watch them flower. There's a few sun patient purple some Monarda. And then he also did a huge clump of the Diplodenias. I'm not sure how they're going to do in the ground, so we'll see. Um, but they'll look pretty once they start flowering with that red. And we got beautiful white sun patients. Along the edge here, he put some of the gold dust. So that's going to be a ground cover annual that's going to be yellow. We've got these beautiful Dianthus blooming. See if I can tell what color they are with the tag here. Paint the town fancy. So those are really nice. And then in this container, we have again the same thriller, that black tall house plant, tropical. And then he put some cladium in. Again, we put some of the Asclepius for the butterflies, creeping Jenny. And then there's the violet ice verbena. There's some petunias too. This is a uh, I believe that's the trailing silver or trailing blue. There's an angelonia that's not blooming yet. 
So that will look really pretty as that continues to fill out the summer as well. So I'm really excited to see how this area continues to color up and fill out throughout the summer. I think so far Rod's done a really great job of creating an instant impact of color though in this space since when we get up here it's, you know, it's already June so we want to have color once we get up. So let's take a walk back to the back garden. We're going to start off this garden tour right at the road. So in this garden we do have deer that browse so we'll see how these things continue to do throughout the summer. Last year they did fairly well uh, so we'll see how that works this year. Um, I haven't seen a ton of deer like right up in our area, like right in our yard area, but in the woods and stuff all around us, there are hundreds of deer. So hopefully they just stay away. Although I did kind of create a little, uh, or Rod created a little salad bar for them here. So what we did right at the road is we created a red, white, and blue garden using the Sun Patience Red, Sun Patience White, and then the Lobelia Compact Blue with Eye. As we head down a little bit, we've got the hot pink sun patients. That bright green you're seeing, that's Aurelia Sun King. So that's a great shade perennial. We have a bunch of cladiums there with some of the black uh, sweet potato vine. That's the jet black. More sun patients just lining the drive. And then when we, two years ago, we planted clematis and they're starting to grow nicely. The one we have blooming here in front of us. This is still waters. And then on the ground there, that is Clematis viva polonia. So this is fairly ish shady. So they would do a lot better if they were in full sun. And these are fairly immature plants as well. Uh, so we'll see how they continue to put on more flowers throughout the summer. But really they're just adding a little splash of color because they're not getting near enough sun to do the full display of color that a clematis normally would do. The front garden bed that lines the road, we emptied a lot of the things out of here last year and poked in a lot of the shrubs that we like. Um, what we did leave is we did leave the ornamental grasses because they give a lot of really cool fall color. So some of the plants that we have in this garden now are the sun patients. Lasmachia creeping jenny is the yellow you're seeing. We planted some allium. That's blue bubbles, it's not blooming yet, uh, but that will be a summer bloomer. There's some salvia unplugged pink. There is the Jacob's Ladder Heaven Scent. Some lecanthemum. And then we put some creeping flax in here to give that spring color. The orange you're seeing is Campfire Bidens. The plants we put in for structure are Little Lime Punch and Invincible uh, Garnetta. So they're very immature right now, but they'll continue to grow and fill this area in. The variegated foliage with the yellow and red, that is the Monarch Banquet Escalapius. That's an annual, but that will be great for the butterflies that we have around. We've got the compact, uh, or the Mini Vista White. Some irises that were here, we left them because that's nice spring color. There's some salvia and cleome. In the middle there is the Garnetta hydrangea. Let's see, he planted something. Oh, around the sign here, this is gomfrina, which will be kind of a really wispy pink flower when it's flowering. Some more salvia. So really we kind of took into account the butterflies when we were planting up this space. And we kind of tried to mirror this garden as well. So there's another invincible Garnetta along with the Sun Patients, some more of the Escalapius. Uh, the bright yellow you're seeing there, that is Spirea candy corn. Some more creeping flax for the spring color along with Heaven Sent Jacob's Ladder. And then as we take the corner here, we've got some salvia along with the creeping jenny, the pink phlox, and then some of the compact blue lobelia. So this area is quite a nice splash of color as people drive past and it definitely creates some attention to this garden bed. Let's take a walk to the front of the house and see what we have planted there. 
So Rod had a lot of fun planting this space. Uh, this was actually originally planted two years ago. So pretty much most of the perennials and shrubs in this garden bed are about two years old. So some of the plants we put in here for foundation were, let's actually, let's head to the far side of this garden and I'll walk our way this back through it and explain to you what we got a little bit better. So in the back corner here, we planted a Rosa Sharon and that doesn't look like it's coming back. We'll leave it there and see. Uh, Rosa Sharon are deer resistant, so that's why we planted that there. We wanted to create kind of a barrier so that if deer do come in this area that they couldn't get into this garden. So obviously we'll have to maybe plant another one or see if that one comes back. Uh, he tucked in some of the Surefire Red Begonias. Heuchera, Spirea are also a deer resistant shrub. So here are three different Spireas. This is the double play doozy. And then he poked a bunch of annuals in for color. So there's bubble gum, some sun patients. I think that's coral sun super bells. There's some creeping flocks that gave us early color. And then on the edge of this bed, he did a bunch of Vista Jazzberry. So those are gonna look super once that fills out with a major mass of beautiful color just edging this bed. Other things in this bed we have, let's look at the back here up against the wall. There is a bunch of Bobo Hydrangeas. So the back is lined with Bobo Hydrangeas. And then we have a smooth hydrangea there. I believe that's going to be Oh, probably like Garnetta or Ruby. We'll see once it blooms what color it is. And then he packed in the annuals so that there won't be any space showing but petunias with the shrubs poking through. We've got a bunch of coneflower that we kind of weaved through this bed. So those will be blooming during the summer. There's some Monarda and some, some Phlox. That's the opening act Phlox. And then right behind the petunias, we did a bunch of pugsters, pugster blue. So those will be blooming midsummer. A few of the corbels, those came back really nice. The corbels did. And here's a few more of the echinacea. And then on this end over here, he kind of continued with more of that coral sun super bells and then Phlox and Monarda. So the bed is kind of ish just waking up. It's the beginning of June. So not a whole lot of color except for the annual color that Rod just popped into here. Uh, but it'll be fun to watch as this continues to fill out and color up throughout the summer. So I hope you enjoyed this walk through the Northern Michigan garden with me. If you have any questions, leave comments below. I'd love to help answer any questions you might have. Um, stay tuned to net more videos that will be coming and we'll be walking you through this garden again within the next couple weeks or so. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings.